All right, thanks everybody at home for tuning in. Uh, I am here with Pete Hamblin and Carissa Moore to talk about their new film, Riss. Pete and Carissa, how are you guys doing? I'm kind of surprised we managed to connect you two considering you're on like the most opposite sides of the world possible and time zones and everything else. How's, how's yeah. it going? I know you just got out of the water, right? Yes, just got out of the water from early morning surf. Um, yeah, started the day off good. She's super lucky. I don't, I don't know if she's actually in proper lockdown over there. She seems to be surfing every day and having the best time. <laughs> to be honest, I, I, my life hasn't changed much. Uh, maybe I'm just a hermit, but I literally just surf and then I come home and I sleep and do stuff around the house and then I'll go back to the beach. And then, <laughs> so well, yes, uh, my routine hasn't been, changed much. You've been able to surf the whole time and the waves have been just pumping, huh? Well, I don't know about pumping the whole time, but we have definitely had a couple swells that have been really fun. I really, we're really fortunate here in Hawaii that, um, yeah, things are good and we're allowed to surf. I think I'd be going a little crazy if I wasn't able to jump in the water every day. Yeah. Um, well, cool. Well, thanks so much for taking the time, you guys. Uh, we're going to kick things off by uh, by putting the, the trailer on. So we'll go ahead and watch that. Awesome. I want to be a pro surfer so that I can travel the world um, with my board. And that's that's really what I want to do, just enjoy surfing and go surfing around the world with some of the girls. Now I bet you are asking, what does this dream really look like? Is it just slow motion lifestyle footage captured on the set of a tropical paradise? A slow walk on a long pier? The thoughtful look beyond the bow of the boat? Smiles, waves friends, bruise, bros, and sisterhood, the great outdoors, a utopia with little responsibility or consequence, or, or could it be something else, something different? Blow my mind, blow my mind, blow my mind, blow my, I found a potion. ultimately are all of our biggest goals in life. It's to find, find love, to share that love with other people too. This is an exploration into the fairy tale captured in 2019 during the world title race. How's that post it's insane. <laughs> but Pete, you, you, really like, uh, you really like to make easy, easy straightforward, uh, minimalist edits, don't you? <laughs> What was that? Sorry, I actually didn't hear you broke up the Todd. What did you say? I was saying you, you really love to make simple, like really straightforward, easy edits. <laughs> yeah, I seem to be trying to complicate my life. I'm not sure why, why I jumped down these tasks, but yeah, they are a little bit more complicated than the normal kind of linear story, I think. Yeah, definitely. So, so this trailer, you know, it mentions that this, this movie is about the story behind the athlete. Can you tell me a little bit about kind of how this project came together and why that was like the, the angle you wanted to take with the story? Cool. Um, initially, Chris and I, um, I think we met up maybe a year and a bit ago now, where I was just really keen to, I love kind of Carissa's background story. I didn't know too much about her, but I thought from a business perspective, it was a great idea to jump into uh, an overview story on Carissa. So I phoned her up one day. Uh, it turned out she was also interested in doing something with me. So um, she had literally came over about three days later, she came and hung out at my house um, in London. And we kind of, it was just a process of really getting to know each other. And we decided and we wrote a script for a, a filler length feature, which actually documents Carissa's whole life from childhood um, and tells her very unique story. I think what was quite interesting is that initially I didn't know the, the details of Carissa's life story and getting to know her in that way, I was just blown away and I was like, it's going to be an epic story. We've got to tell this story. Um, and so we went through the process of writing the script and getting that script together. And at the same time, I was just spending time with Riss. 
um, getting to know her a bit better. We went on a trip or two together um, and I was capturing the footage. Then we didn't get greenlit on the bigger feature. So um, I kind of had this footage and we got um, some finance thanks to Red Bull to do a little, like a little series around her on a 2019 world tour. And she went out and had the best year ever, right, Chris? And ended up winning her fourth world title and um, becoming first surfing Olympian in, in America. And that was just such an incredible story as it is. But I think along the way, the biggest thing is that there was de this development from not knowing someone and to meeting them and becoming friends with them. And I just thought that was incredible. And that's why this film project came together because this film is called Riss. It's about getting to know who she is behind, peeling back that layer of the professional athlete and getting to know who she is. And it was, it was a very personal journey for us because over that period, I got, we became friends. And that's really what it is. It's, it's kind of a, a story is about becoming friends with Riss and getting to know who she is. Hey, Carissa, for you, what was it like having Pete follow you around, uh, sticking a camera in your face when you're trying to like win a world title? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like Pete said, um, it was a journey of becoming friends. And I think as the year went on and as we spent more time together, it was it became easier. I mean, there was definitely times where I was like, okay, I just need my space, I need to focus. But um, it was easy to hang out. It was easy to go have dinners and go for walks and do little interviews and have those open conversations because I felt like I really trust Pete and he's someone that, I don't know, I call a really good friend and I will for the rest of my life. Thanks, Rose, awesome. but she, did, she didn't trust me at first. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Uh, well, we're going to throw to uh, one of the highlight moments of your year, which, uh, which is documented in the film from, uh, from your big win at J-Bay. So let's check that out. So it starts on the Gold Coast of Australia, then Bells, Bali, West Oz, Rio, J-Bay, America, France, Portugal, Hawaii. Do we only have nine events? Were there only nine events? Did I count it wrong? Oh, no, no, because there's a couple events in Australia. That's why. And I was like, nine? There's only nine. 150 <laughs> days on the world. Approximately 150 days on the world. 30 flights crossing 88 time zones. 117 hours of air time. 70,000 air miles. Excess baggage. So much excess baggage. Hotels, B&Bs, homestays, car hires, insurance, taxis, jet lag, signing. <laughs> Taxis, jet lag, signings. 300 signatures a year? A lot of selfies. Very uncomfortable selfies. Like when they hold you too close and you're just like, space bro. <laughs> no one's gonna touch me from now on. When they see this, they're gonna be like, oh, she doesn't like to be touched. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect way to end it, isn't it? <laughs> you know what, Carissa, it's fine because nobody wants to be touched. By <laughs> touching, is, touching is canceled for quite a while, so I think that's oh. fine. It's so, it's so hard right now because I love giving people hugs, especially like when I first see them, it's like definitely my way to greet people. And like, even like just as of recent, like there's been a few people that have wanted to take photos and I'm like, okay, okay, wait, wait, we have to social distance that I just, I hate doing that, but I'm like trying to be good about it, you know? Uh, That's gotta be so weird. It's um, a bit weird. <laughs> But yeah, you know, seeing seeing the whole you break down the whole tour schedule like that, you know, it's really crazy. Like kind of the the expectation on the world tour surfers of like how much of their year gets taken up by that. Um, and it makes sense that you would want to you know take a year off of competition after doing it for so long, which you announced before the season started. So like you know before the pandemic and everything happened, um, can you talk a little bit about like you know I know that you wanted to focus on your more Aloha program. Can you tell us a little bit about that and kind of how COVID-19 has affected that? Yeah, so I mean, like everyone, my life and my schedule has come to a little bit of a standstill and have kind of had to adapt and change my expectations a bit. Um, I had big goals for more Aloha and my nonprofit and doing a couple of events. Unfortunately, um, it's canceled or put on pause until things open up and um, I feel comfortable putting girls together in a, you know, in a gathering situation. So, um, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm really passionate about the next generation of, of girls and using the surfing as a platform to bring girls together and helping them just to be good humans. <laughs> 
Nice. And so is, is it mostly like local girls that you work with, like in Hawaii? Are there, are there any future world champs in there that we should be like looking out for? <laughs> well, so last year was like I, the first big year for more Aloha. We, we just did a several, we did a camp, we did a day event, and we actually did like a little global exchange at the end of the year. Um, and then this year I was planning a camp on the Gold Coast of Australia. So I'm trying to branch out a little bit. Um, my dad also has a small mentoring program. Um, and one of the girls is just gosh, she's mind blowing. Um, she's only 12 years old and she like every day I watch her surf, I, I get a little scared. I'm like, oh, my time's almost up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the future's looking bright. There's a few girls of that next generation that all over the world that are just, it's exciting. That's awesome. And um, so yeah, now of course everyone's ha like, whether people wanted to have a year off or not, they are on tour. Um, and in this time, you know, the WSL is talking about kind of making some big changes. I'm wondering, like, what are you hearing on your end about these changes? And like, in your ideal world, what what would you change about the tour, or kind of how would you like to see it evolve? Yeah. Um, well, I'm pretty excited. I think it's there's no better time for change. Um, it's a great, you know, it's it's a clean slate right now, and you know, it's kind of change is also a little scary. I'm a little nervous and a little apprehensive about it. I mean, um, to have it come down to the last heat of the last event. I mean, it's going to be super cool. I mean, it was so fun watching Gabriel and Italo battle it, battle it out at Pipe mm -hmm. last year. And um, I really think it'll keep the anticipation and the stakes high till the very end. Um, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's, it's, it's good to mix things up and keep things fresh, not only for the audience, but for the athletes too. So yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully being a part of a part of it. <laughs> yeah, whenever that gets around, happening, we're, all, we're all very excited to see how that turns out. Um, and now we're gonna watch that, uh, that clip from J-Bay, which is one of the biggest highlights of your year last year. So let's check that out. She made finals, and um, first time she's had the yellow jersey in three years. Carissa Moore looking for her first win of the season. These are the mornings that you really dream about. It's the perfect recipe for perfect J-Bay. Now she starts to go to town. Big snap in the pocket with a little bit of free fall drop. Right on the money. The Hawaiian jams it, super powerful off the top. Layback hack to finish for Carissa Moore. She's on top of the world and she's going to be really hard to stop. I just won! I just won! The Gabriel Medina taking out the veteran. Lakey Peterson, it's a great job. We'll let the boys send you into Tahiti. So stoked. I need all the feelings out in one moment. One moment. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. I need a nap before we go out. <laughs> that moment there, that, did, that moment there, that's when we were hooked. Because we had, think about it from our side, from a filming perspective, we had never been involved in, 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 in that process. And we were so invested in it. And the, I think the, the period went for quite a long time. And then suddenly it was just game on and we were part of the winning crew. And we we're like, this is super cool. We need to be a part of this. This is awesome. So it was great. And we were hooked in. Tell the story. You know, Pete and Sam were like my good luck charms. Like up until that point, obviously I hadn't won an event that season. And that's when kind of everything turned around was at JBay. And these guys were there, that they were there for the rest of them. I was like, you guys gotta come with me more often. I know, dude. We're traveling the world next year with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Pete, what's it like for you when you're 
you know, you're trying to document something like this, but obviously like Carissa has like a contest to focus on. And like, how do you kind of like know, like, like, you know, when to like give space so she could like zone in and when to. Yeah, know. I think, I think spending time with Carissa before um, and getting to know her, I, I kind of, I didn't want to go to these comps and be in her face all the time. I think actually at every single event, we, we maybe spent a day together, if that. The rest of the time it was very fly on the wall and a very docky kind of approach, like reportage kind of approach. And that's how I wanted it to be. But I think what I did and what I learned quite a while back is I scripted this movie like before I did it. I didn't just go out there and try and capture everything and then try and piece the story together. It was about, yes, bits and pieces came along the way, like when we're hanging out and having trips and getting to know Riss more, that's how more of the script developed. But I had a very clear idea of what I wanted to do at every single shoot. So I knew I didn't have to shoot a whole lot of shit. I, I could get what I wanted and then just capture the golden little moments like when she won, which obviously adds absolute beauty. And then it was also about, I didn't want to limit this to technology and having a big crew and loads of cameras. I wanted it to be organic and just capture little moments. So man, I shot things on the iPhone, parts of the film on iPhone because that's, I didn't want to come with the big ca camera and make her nervous. And suddenly she would be dancing. I was like, stuff this. And I kind of like film it on the iPhone and it's golden. And I, so yeah, I didn't limit it with that. So it was just capturing those little moments. Which is yeah, awesome. I think I actually, uh, there's a scene where you can see your reflection and I was like, oh, you shoot it on an iPhone. That's pretty funny. <laughs> totally, man. I shot, it, I shot it on everything. And that's what was also super fun. I, I wanted to just, I, obviously coming from a digital background and never shot on film. Um, so I just wanted to have fun with it. So I shot on eight more footage and I'd be shooting Riss and Riss says, do you know even what, do you even know what you're doing with that? I'm like, no, I don't even know how it's going to come out. And then it would come out good. I'd be, just check how cool this is. So it was just an experiment really. And spending loads of money on film, <laughs> watching to develop and not even know if it would come out, but it, it came out epic. So it was like, That's amazing. So, so Chris, on these kind of days, I mean, this isn't your first rodeo, obviously, like waking up on a finals day and, and you know, having like so much on the line. W what is that kind of, what do those days feel like to you? Like, do you sleep the night before? Like kind of, uh, you know, what's your routine when you're going into something like this? Yeah, um, well, nights before finals day, I mean, they're always a little anxious. I, I try to get the best sleep that I can. I try to just focus on what's right in front of me. I mean, the worst thing you can do is have a freak out and not get your sleep the night before. So, um, and I kind of, I don't know, I just kind of tell myself, Hey, I can't control what's going to happen tomorrow. So I might as well get, you know, get as much rest as I possibly can. Um, and I also find that I end up doing my best when I'm at peace and I'm kind of, and I'm more relaxed. So that's always, that's always the goal. Yeah. Awesome. Well, it certainly worked out of JB, didn't it? <laughs> Thanks. We played a little charades before finals day. That always helps for sure. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So we're going to take a look at another clip from the film, which is uh, a really interesting section about uh, authenticity and kind of how you define yourself in the, uh, the public spotlight. So let's check that out. There's just so many different distractions and things that are trying to mold you or change you into something that you're not. Then who is an authentic Carissa Moore? Her media trained response when asked how she feels after losing is this. Yeah, um, it is what it is. And there, I just wasn't, I didn't make the best decisions and she surfed really well. And I think I just have to go, go back and take a look at it and figure out what I need to do moving forward. When what she actually wants to say is. How do you think I feel? I feel like shit. I just lost. I'm out of the content. <laughs> oh, I love that. So, I mean, <laughs> post scene interviews are a weird thing, aren't they? Aren't they? Because it's like there's this expectation that you should keep your emotions in check. But I mean, like competitive surfing is like an emotional thing, isn't it? I feel like we should just like let it go more often. Honestly, like one of my favorite moments, like of competitive surfing, was watching Freddie P ride up onto the rocks at Gold Coast. Like. <laughs> I just, we need more of those raw moments. It's hard though, because, so, you know, there is definitely like a wall and a guard up and you don't really want even your competitors to see how much it hurts. So yeah, I, most of the time I'm doing all that stuff behind closed doors when I get home. 
Did you break your boards once you get home? Uh, you know, I haven't punched any boards or breaking any boards. I can promise you that. I can, yeah. <laughs> Pete, was the, was the whole goal of this movie secretly to get Carissa to say a swear word? Uh, yeah, 100%. You know what? The thing is, the very, very first interview I did with her, she said a swear word. And it was gnarly. And it was that whole, it was, she was so sweet and typical professional Carissa. And suddenly she broke that wall and she swore. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting. That's so cool. And that, that was almost like a trigger to trying to get behind um, that professional thing. But yeah, I just wanted to make her swear the whole time. <laughs> Mission, mission accomplished. <laughs> but um, but yeah, this, this section of the film is about authenticity. And, you know, like Chris, I'm sure there's a lot of girls who, you know, come up in professional surfing and have people, whether it's the media or the brands, kind of trying to define who they are for them. Um, like kind of what advice would you give to, to girls who are coming up in surfing and, and trying to figure out how to navigate that? Gosh, well, um... I think it would be to listen to your intuition and listen to your heart and your gut because usually that's the right answer for you. And I feel like obviously there's nobody, I, I feel like the world only, like they need just the best version of yourself. And so um, I truly believe everybody's here for a purpose and everyone has something unique and different about them. So embrace that and share that. Um, and yeah, be unapologetically yourself. I think that's the most attractive thing. Awesome. Yeah, that kind of feels like that's kind of like the whole spirit of the movie. Um, and uh, we're going to watch one last clip. And this is you know, kind of like one of the pinnacles of the film, which is uh, you know, right before you actually won the world title. Um, so we're going to check that out. Six, seven, three, just leaving the door slightly open for Caroline Marks on a bomb out. 27 the seconds, babe. Waiting for scores though? Still waiting for scores. Right? Zero, zero seconds. Caroline needs a what? She needs an eight. They really deliberate, I know that. Waiting on that number. Chasing down a big score, it is not enough. 15, she got a six. <laughs> So that's, that's a really cool moment. Can you kind of, uh, Carissa, can you talk about like what those moments feel like? Like it's gotta be so good to be sitting there. It's kind of like totally out of your hands. And I'd imagine time is like painfully slow. <laughs> painfully slow. Like, oh, I like, I just wanted it to be over. It's, it's really hard to hold it together because you know it's getting to the very end and there's potential that it could just happen but then you have to make sure that you're ready in case it doesn't and we Caroline and I would have had a matchup um in the next heat so um it's exciting it's uh, you know all those emotions and of everything that you've put into it is just right there I've, I felt like exploding to be honest like I just I was so um there's just so much excitement and just ready for it to be over so I could take a breath um so yeah no that was a really special moment i thought pete did a really good job of building up um how nervous and exciting it was i was stoked with that i stoked with the moments before i kept on going down trying to capture little nuggets of emotion and she she she's when she's in in like professional mode and go mode there's very little she gives and she's just coming up the cliffs and just being announced that she had made the olympic team and I was like, oh, I've got to try something now. And I just like asked her a little question. And, and then she like kind of broke down for a second. And I was like, yes, got it. And then let it go off. It was awesome. It was really good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's, you know, when you guys started this project, I mean, you had no idea that she was going to win the world title. Like, obviously, you can't know that. So, I mean, for you, Pete, like in this moment, you're just like, you know, it's like jackpot. Like, <laughs> it's all, an inc it's incredible journey. Yeah. I think when we had met, she was coming off the back of, Portugal or France the year before and it wasn't a great year and she wasn't having a great time and literally the transformation from there to winning a fourth world title in Olympic Games is just incredible it's like the dream story that you could tell but I actually got asked this question the other day what if Riz didn't win the fourth world title and then what if she, what, she didn't go to the Olympics and I think the story would have still been just as inspirational because it's about her journey as an individual and about how she's grown as an individual and 
So it still would have been just as inspiring and just as awesome, I think, if, if she hadn't won it. There would have been no twist to the end. It would have just been, because it's really about her growth as an individual. So yeah, it was awesome. So Carissa, I mean, like each, every world title year, it's like, I mean, it's, it's completely different. And like, so when you get to that end point, like, does it feel more familiar or is it like the same amount of like inner drama, like every single time? Every time is a little different, like you said, every, um, but, but, but there is a familiarity to it. Um, like when I was in the locker room, I, I think I won my title in 2015, the, the similar way, similar way I was in the locker room and another heat was going down and so it did bring back a lot of memories from that um and but then I also was drawing confidence from it like okay it could happen now it could happen in a little while but um I, I actually I not that I thrive in those situations but I I love those moments of excitement and pressure and it's, it's a lot of fun awesome well cool um yeah we uh, we hope that you win piles more of those world title trophies. Um, so good luck with that in the future. And then um, yeah, that's that's it. Thanks everybody so much for tuning in. Um, and uh, be sure to go to surfer.com on Monday, where you where you will be able to watch this in its entirety. Uh, until then, uh, thanks and stay safe, everyone. Thanks Thank for having us, Todd. Appreciate it, bro. Thanks, thanks. guys. Thanks.